All right, hey, welcome to a kind of new venture that um, Peter Holland from the Canton Repository and I are doing. Uh, we're doing some quick thoughts about each of the big teams in Ohio, from the Buckeyes to the Browns and the Bengals, and we're talking some Browns here. Uh, exciting times, Peter. Um, you've got a chance to cover the Browns so far. I, I think you were telling me that you're going to the third preseason game. What are your thoughts so far about the Browns from what you've seen? Yeah, I'm um, very excited to be part of the coverage with um, Cam Repository and the Academic Journal. I'm going to be at the um, the game on Saturday when we play the Bears, so that's going to be an exciting experience. Um, definitely, definitely going to see what um, – there's a little bit of excitement, but at the same time concerns. You can say um, as far as um, what's the quarterback situation with Jacoby Brissett because we haven't really seen him yet or how he's going to be looking. And then um, on the other side is the um, we see we've seen a lot of young who's going to be the we're still looking at who's going to be the number two receiver. I was going to be that guy outside of Mari Cooper, and um, the hoping will be uh, um, Swartz or Don Peoples Jones, but they haven't really been convincing. Or maybe it'll be one of the rookies that he drafted, like David Bell, who they really like. Um, so that's another concern as well. And the offensive line, they lost two centers um, in the whole camp for the season. So they. They got to take care of the line and um, keep them healthy before week one. Um, so there's a lot of – it's a death issue right now for the Cleveland Browns, I'm pretty much what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that, you've done a great job of kind of, yeah, addressing because, you know, the Browns can still be a good team this year. There are questions, as you said. Let's try to address these, like, one by one. Um, you know, Jacoby Brissett's played in practice. You know, he, but he hasn't played in the preseason games. And, and Peter, I I don't get that. I, I was shocked from, you know, they, they lost 21-20 to the Eagles. Again, don't worry about the preseason scores. They don't mean much of anything. But, man, I, I, like, I was expecting Jacoby Brissett to play the whole game. But he didn't get any reps. And, and he's new to the Browns. I, I mean, you would think what better chance of getting some game reps where you're handing the ball off to... You know, your backs, you're throwing some passes. Um, did it surprise you he didn't play at all against the Eagles? I thought he would get at least a series or two. Um, I don't know if it's all that surprising. Uh, I think they just want to get both young guys in, see what the well, how they look with the, the third string, fourth stringers. Like, uh, they also want to see what Joshua Dobbs um, and Josh Rosen, those two good getting out, who will be the number three. So, Really, not that much of a surprise in particular. I think that I, I I would be surprised if they don't play him this Saturday, just to get a good look of him in the offense. So it got it. If there's one game where we should, if there's one game in which we, we, we should see Jacoby Brissett, it has to be the Saturday, just so that's like the dress rehearsal. You can say um, how put all the all your starters together and see how they look. Right. Yeah, because I like I'm thinking just get a couple reps. I mean, if Jacoby Brissett's been with the Browns for a while, okay, maybe you don't play him. But you know, they change their whole quarterback room, which is fine. But I mean, get these guys a chance to play. One guy who did get a chance of playing that I was kind of surprised. I've followed the Steelers all my life, and um, he hasn't done too much for the Steelers. But my goodness, uh, Josh Jobs looked pretty good. Uh, on Sunday, um, obviously, you know, Deshaun Watson's your quarterback when Deshaun Watson comes back. Um, the Browns have said Jacoby Brissett's the guy. Uh, did Josh Dobbs change your opinion of him at all, or was it just that he had a good game? I mean, I heard some people saying, are we sure that Jacoby Brissett's better than Joshua Dobbs? Is Dobbs better <laughs> than Brissett? I mean, I, I think it was one good game. I think we need to relax, but... Did you see anything in Josh Jobs that surprised you on Sunday? Jobs definitely gave us a reminder that he he is an athletically gifted 
quarterback um, who he pretty much showed that he's still a dual threat. You know, he's more effective with his arms than with his legs. So, um, but it's easy to beat out a bunch of guys, third stringers, fourth stringers that are like going to get cut. So, right. I want to put too much stock into that. Um, I think Joshua Dobbs has proven out that he belongs on a team, and you can use him if. If things go left with with um, Jacoby Brissett, that at least you have the depth that you need more than them just um, thinking uh, he's going to take somebody's spot. He's just happy that he's just there. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because the Steelers, I mean, Josh Dobbs can throw by all means. Um, but, you know, once you get, like, Deshaun Watson back and once you get – um, Jacoby Brissett playing. Yeah, Josh Dobbs could be another running option, too. Um, the Steelers have actually used Josh Dobbs at times as kind of like that running quarterback. So, don't I wouldn't necessarily expect Dobbs to be your franchise guy, but Dobbs does present some speed options that, you know, he did show off uh, pretty well against the Eagles. Um, so, you know, Deshaun Watson, it's older story. Um, he's now suspended for 11 games uh, based on the uh, a settlement reach after the NFL appealed his suspension. Let's ask the next upcoming question as we kind of, we know what the suspension is for Watson. I would say in the NFL period, and tell me if I'm wrong here, you got to be at least 9 and 8, probably 10 and 7 if you want to make the playoffs. I know it's kind of determined by how the teams go. But probably 10 and 7 would be a good mark to be in, at least, if you want to make sure you make the playoffs. So Deshaun Watson's going to be available for the past six games. Where do you think the Browns need to be after the first 11 to when Deshaun Watson comes back? You say, man, he's got a chance to make that push. I'm thinking maybe 6 and 5, would you agree, at least? Well, first of all, the first thing I will say is, Nine and ten wins are not going to make you a playoff team at all. You're going to have to try to get over ten wins if you at least get be a wild card team, just the way the AFC is stacked up. So, so to be sure of making the AFC wild card, eleven you wins is the mark that you shoot for. You got at least got to get somewhere in the ten to eleven win range. Okay. Um, because you never know, because this is a stack AFC division, and you're talking about the you're talking about teams like the look at the AFC West. Anyone can oh, make yeah. the, that team. You look at um, the north, the north itself with Baltimore coming back um, healthy, um, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh down in the AFC East. You got the Buffalo Bills. You saw the Miami Dolphins made a crazy offseason moves. So. <laughs> It's going to take more than just nine, ten wins to be a playoff contender team. You've got to at least get over to that just to at least get a wild card spot. Um, so, so, for, so with the Browns, um, they're in a tough spot, too, um, if, they, if they really think they can make that push. Um, I think getting them to just, just above, just at least 500 seems like a tough task to Tough to ask, especially with the first six teams that you're going to be facing. Um, those are the first first eleven games in total. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to be an adjustment period at first, and is I don't know. I think what Jacoby Brissett, I think he's good enough to at least get you four wins. And that's with the fully healthy, healthy crowd. I mean, yeah, but at the same time, um, the Cleveland Browns, they feel like they're Deshaun Watson away, and you have to somehow at least be decent or serviceable until he gets back. But the, the concerning about it is that Deshaun Watson, I mean, just from human nature, is he's going to get his legs cut up under him because he's just coming back, hasn't played over a year. So is he going to be the same Deshaun Watson that you hoping he will be? So, and if he is, it could be too late. That's probably the the concerning part as well. So 
if they do manage to get at least nine or ten wins, as you can predict, is it still enough to move get to to the playoffs? It could be too late for all we know. Well, if you think about it, too, even if they can make it with 10 wins, you're, you're the lowest seed. I mean, you're, you're not coming in. I mean, you're going to be playing the Bills early. and you're, I mean, it's, it's going to be a really tough, uh, you know, a tough pass to make it. And you're right. And, man, but, man, Pierre, if, if you're expecting 11 wins, I mean, think about, say they're 6-5, and five, which might be a tough task. Even if they're six and five, you get that eleven wins. Deshaun comes back. You got to win five of the last six, and again, Deshaun hasn't played a regular season game in the NFL for a year and three quarters. You know, by the time he comes back, and he's got the talent and the ability, but there's going to be a huge weight on his shoulders. Um, his first game, he's at Houston. Now, Houston's a terrible football team. They should win that game, but there's a lot of pressure going back to where you played. I'm sure the fans there aren't going to be too happy with Deshaun. And then you've got games against Pittsburgh. You've got games with Cincinnati, Baltimore coming up. Hey, Deshaun's good enough to win some games, but man, he's got a tough schedule in the past six games to win five out of six or even four out of six. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the schedule right now uh, after, the tech, after the Texans. They got at the Bengals. Then they host um, the Ravens. They got the Saints. Washington yeah. Commanders and the end with the Steelers. It's, it's going to be a tough stretch. And you just hope that um, the Browns, are, you're just hoping that Deshaun Watson is up to speed or, is, or he's up to what he used to be or what he was in Houston. So you just hope for that, or at least that's what you want to do. Um, when he made the first game against Jacksonville, that way he looked too convincing. So that wasn't really the first impression that you want for Deshaun, but it's preseason. You want to just pass judge on it, but uh, but there's gonna be some there's gonna be some rest. It, that's just yeah. the human nature of it. So because a lot of the players are faster than they were two two years ago. So there's some guys that Deshaun Watson haven't seen two years ago. So you. Just, those are just something that you just got to take into play with um, Deshaun and how he will handle it when he returns. I, I like how you brought this up early, and let's end with this. And, you know, you can give me a quick answer because I'm sure we're going to be talking about this in future weeks too. That number two receiver is a big question mark for the Browns, in my opinion. Um, and I'll, I'll even go as far, Pierce, to tell you I like Amari Cooper. I, I mean, I think he's solid. But Amari Cooper isn't always great. I mean, Amari will give you a really great game one game, and there might be another game or two where he doesn't do much of anything. So, you know, I mean, he's your number one. I guess you got to go with him. But as you talked about earlier, man, that number two position, you know, Donovan Peoples-Jones had some injury concerns. He's had some really good games last year. Is he that guy? We don't know. Um, Bell, third round pick. You're right. The Browns have high hopes for him, but man, are, are you taking a third round pick and saying, "Okay, here's our number two guy"? I'm not sure if he's right now your number two guy. And then Anthony Schwartz. I love the, the kid's speed. He's a really fast guy, but he had some drop concerns in the first preseason game. Um, it could change, um, Peter. I know you're probably going to be looking at as you go up and cover the game uh, this weekend. Who's your number two right now? If we had to open the season today for the Browns, um, right now I think you just probably got to stick with um, Anthony Schwartz and hopefully that he plays better than he was he were in the preseason. He has looked good during practice. Um, I think he got off of the the drop pass mark, dropping passes. Uh, it happens for the best of it. Uh, it happens. So um, I think they're pro- I think it's probably going to be either him or Donovan Peoples Jones. Those are guys who are he's they're your experienced guys and they're they're part of that. They've been in the system, so that's probably the safe way of putting it. And so just throwing um, David Bell into the fire, I think he'll yeah. probably be like a third option. So it might be one of it might be either any Anthony Schwartz or Donovan Peoples Jones. And I, I think, think for, in them. I agree. I think for the Browns. Man, this is a year. David Njoku has come very hyped. 
Uh, David Njokoku has got the ability, all the ability in the world to be a great tight end. But, man, he's got to start producing this year. I mean, they need <laughs> David Njoku a lot this year. So maybe they're paying get him, him more so targets. They might as well. Yep. They're paying him, so they might as well. Yeah, very much so. All right, well, Pierre, looking forward to you going up to this game. Uh, let us know what you hear and what you think. I, I know person it's going to be fun for you. Star County's got a uh, Demetrius Robinson, I believe, um, you know, a draft pick that's playing for the Bears, so right? Yes, Dominic Robinson. Dominic, um, okay, that's, one name, sorry. That's who I'm going to be covering at the, um, at the game. Um, apparently, he's been balling out in Chicago. Uh, there's even one national analyst said that he could be a quote unquote secret superstar. Oh, um, okay. he, he, he's been looking good. He had a sack the first game. He had like a couple, a pair of tackles the second game. So I'm definitely looking forward to see the uh, catch up with them and how he's been playing um, throughout the preseason. And I would imagine he's probably not starting yet. So I'd imagine he'd get a bunch of action this week too, right? Yeah, um, he has. He wasn't starting. He was just pretty much. Um, he's been getting first team reps throughout practice, mm-hmm. but he was. Um, he was like a rotation guy, um, playing mostly in the second half. Um, I think <clears throat> they're going to stick with Robert Quinn, and um, I think the other guy is um, Deshaun Gibson, the guy right. playing opposite end, I believe. So, but if you're Desha- if you're Dominique. I mean, that, that's just fine because you're playing behind two veterans and you're going to be yeah. somewhere in that vocation. They're going to find a space for a guy like him with his with his explosiveness, his athleticism, the way he just come off the ball and just get into the quarterback. They're going to make a room for him just because of his upside. Yeah, definitely. And I'm saying, too, if, if you're a um, – obviously, there's Browns fans here in um, northern Ohio, but, man, if you want to see a local kid that's done well, I mean, hey, McKinley grad – uh, yeah, go check him out. I'm sure he's going to get a decent amount of playing time in this game on uh, this weekend. So, very mm-hmm. good. Well, well Pierre, th- thanks. Uh, I know we've been talking about this. We kind of threw this together and we're trying it out. And I- I'm liking this, man. I'm looking forward to doing this again next week. Um, like I said, uh, we- we're going to have some weekly thoughts on the Browns, the Bengals, and the Ohio State Buckeyes. So, uh, let us know what you think. Um, share us with your friends. Uh, do Cash App, man. Uh, Cash App's a really great way of, um, you know, paying for services or sending money to your buddies or whatever the case might be. If you download the, it through our link, uh, attach your, uh, attach your um, account uh, to it, uh, Cash App will pay you five bucks. Great way of getting started with Cash App. I use it a ton. It's a great service. All right, for Pierre, this is Chris. Thanks for your time, everybody. Have a great night, everybody. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer. You know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope to learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.